George Perez is an American comic book artist and writer. He came to prominence in the 1970s for his work on the Avengers and the Fantastic Four Marvel comics. But it wasn't until his work at DC on huge titles such as the New Teen Titans and Crisis on Infinite Earths where he became a household name for comic readers. He's also the one that drew the infamous Snap from Thanos in the Infinity Gauntlet series. George Perez was born on June 9th of 1954 in the South Bronx, New York City. Ever since he was young, he loved to draw. He said he first started drawing at the age of five. His family was too poor to afford paper, so he would use old paper bags instead. Perez is an entirely self-taught artist. He wanted to go to art school and even was accepted into the School of Art and Design, but his family could not afford it and his mother wanted him to go to a Catholic high school instead. He continued to draw and impress his friends with his art, but it wasn't until his freshman year in high school where his friend took him to his first comic book convention. It was there where he got the drive to make a living out of being a comic book artist. He showed his art to a professional artist, Neil Adams, at the convention, and he tore him apart. I felt like I'd just been bombed from above. I was really, really shell-shocked. I was hurt. I was disappointed. But at least it gave me the incentive to improve because now I could no longer get by on the praises of my fellow students who knew nothing about art. At the age of 19, he was recently married and worked as a bank teller, but he still dreamt of becoming a comic book artist one day and still worked on his craft every second he got. And then one day, he got his lucky break. He got a call from Rich Buckler, who is an artist over at Marvel Comics. Rich needed an assistant and Perez jumped at the chance, not even knowing what an assistant job would entail. All while working at the bank, he would assist Rich with his comic books. Mostly Perez would pull references for Thor and Fantastic Four issues, so Rich would know what certain characters would look like and act like. While assisting, Rich would help Perez with his art, teaching him new techniques and helping him get better. After a while, Rich gave Perez his first assignment, drawing a two-page humor strip at the end of Astonishing Tales 25. Then a few months later, he got another great opportunity. Rich Buckler was behind schedule and needed help with an upcoming issue of Monsters Unleashed. Perez got to draw the Gulliver Jones Warrior of Mars story in issue 8, as well as the promo in issue 7. Shortly after that, his relationship with Rich Buckler ended up falling apart. He ended up walking out of his job at Marvel Comics and then shortly after he lost his job at the bank. He didn't know what to do, but thankfully that didn't last long. He was only on unemployment for seven days when he got a call from Marvel. An editor at Marvel called and said they needed a penciler for a fill-in on the Man-Wolf story in Creatures on the Loose number 33. From there, he then got his first cover on issue 34. After that, he got more and more jobs at Marvel, working on the magazine Deadly Hands of Kung Fu, where he co-created his first character, White Tiger, who actually was Marvel's first Latin and Puerto Rican character. Perez's career continued to take off when he began contributing to the Avengers, starting with the Avengers number 141, where he is dubbed Marvel's newest avenging ace. Perez won numerous awards, starting with the Eagle Award in 1979 for his time on the Avengers 167 and 168 and in 170 through 177, and two Eagle Awards after that. During his time with the Avengers, he created many new characters, including the Taskmaster. Then one day, Rich Buckler, who was drawing Fantastic Four at the time, was working on what would have been Fantastic Four Annual. Perez came in to help him, but Rich fell so far behind that they canceled the annual. So that annual with extra art drawn by Perez became his first two issues on Fantastic Four. They were issues 164 and 165. Perez then became one of the main artists on Fantastic Four. When Stan Lee saw his first issue of Fantastic Four, Perez got a phone call from his secretary saying Stan Lee would like to see you. He did not recognize the name on the credits on that Fantastic Four issue. He expected John Romita. And that was the first time that Stan and Perez ever sat down together and he gave Perez his first raise. He continued to work on Fantastic Four issues, but it wasn't until Fantastic Four Annual 14 where he got to work with writer Marv Wolfman. That is where his career really changed. During this time, he was also working at DC Comics, doing a stint on Justice League of America, which he really enjoyed. But then Marv Wolfman approached him with this new team of characters. This new team was going to be a series called The New Teen Titans. Perez really enjoyed doing the Justice League of America and thought that this new Teen Titans would only last a handful of issues, 
because the Teen Titans could never really find their footing. Boy was he wrong. The new Teen Titans would go on to be one of DC's top selling comic books during that time. A few years later, he and Wolfman decided to take a break from the new Teen Titans to focus on their new endeavor, Crisis on Infinite Earths. That limited series was another massive hit for Perez. He then decided to revamp Wonder Woman in 1987. Perez came in as a plotter and penciler of the series, which tied the character more closely to the Greek gods. Perez would work on the title for five years, leaving as an artist after issue 24, but remained as a writer up until issue 62 and then leaving in 1992. It was during this run in 1991 that Perez encountered problems working with DC. Perez stated that he had trouble writing the War of God storyline, mostly due to editorial problems. Perez felt that DC was not wanting to do enough to celebrate Wonder Woman's 50th anniversary. To make matters worse in his eyes, DC did not place War of the Gods in the newsstand distribution, which meant that the comic book could only be found in comic book specialty shops. Perez had built up a plot to marry the character Steve Trevor in his final issue, when he discovered that DC editors had decided to not only pass the Wonder Woman's title writing to William Loeb's, but also had Loeb's write the final wedding scene. After that, Perez quit the title and separated himself from DC for several years. Also in 1991, Perez signed on to pencil the six-issue limited series Infinity Gauntlet from Marvel Comics, which was written by Jim Starlin. However, due to the turbulence happening concurrently with the War of the Gods at DC Comics, this was a very stressful personal period for Perez, and he was not able to finish penciling the entire run of Infinity Gauntlet, leaving the project partway through issue four. The Infinity Gauntlet editorial team decided to find a replacement artist to finish the miniseries, and Ron Lim was the artist chosen, although Perez offered to remain on as an inker over Lim's cover art for the remainder of the miniseries. Over the next couple decades, he would continue to work with a wide range of publishers and different comic book titles. But then in 2013, he had a hemorrhaging of his eye and went nearly blind, so he took a bit of a break from working on comic books. A few health issues and a couple of health scares, but hanging in there and uh, nothing else taking care of myself because there are too many people uh, who seem to really want me to stay around. After a few months, his eye healed and he was able to return back to work, but that opened the door to many more health issues to come. In December of 2021, he revealed that after undergoing surgery for a blockage in his liver, he had been diagnosed with an inoperable pancreatic cancer. Given a prognosis of six to 12 months, he decided not to pursue treatment. Perez died on May 6th in 2022 due to complications from pancreatic cancer. He was said to have died peacefully at his home. He has a legion of fans that adore him and shown him love throughout the years and will continue to treasure his work for generations to come. George Perez will live on forever through his work and through his fans.